Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts which they earn by watching. Uh, as usual, our main struggle is logistics. This is a sandbox series so it's not a matter of budget. It is a matter of making sure that all of our Kerbals are supplied wherever they happen to want to go. And this is a spent supply vessel. It is empty of food, water, and oxygen, and we are deorbiting it so it doesn't get in the way and doesn't clutter the save. And we do that by smacking into the moon. However, unfortunately, it ricocheted off. At least the top container blew up, but the rest of it ricocheted off and attained a fairly high altitude before then smacking into the surface again. You can see it's apoapsis there. Uh, Mir, the station that we were departing from there, uh, we put Mir around the moon for some reason, uh, is in a polar orbit and this thing reached a height of I think it was 230 kilometers or more than that. Anyway, unfortunately no grand explosion there for the final impact. Any so we of course have to send a new supply vessel is the point and I decided to launch it on the Saturn V. This is with upgraded engines so F1As and also J2Ss on the upper stages. Mainly using the Saturn V is my way of saying I want to get this done quickly. It is a simple rocket. It is not necessarily the most efficient rocket that I could design for the purpose, but it will get the job done and I have it sub-assembled, so that is why we went with it. And of course our supply vessel is the same. It's one of those HTV-based supply vessels, and that makes things easier. The goal here is to get supplies over to the station so that we can continue with the more ambitious projects that we have. We've got things arriving at Saturn, and Jupiter as well. So I wanted to get to that, but that requires a lot of time warping. Those long range missions take a lot of time uh, just to get from the edge of the SOI boundary, the sphere influence boundary of Jupiter and Saturn to the periapsis takes a long time. So yes, we need to resupply our things, make sure that everybody is well fed, and then we can go take a look at those. So this is making orbit around the moon. And we also need to make numerous corrections because of the difference in inclination, but ultimately we fix that. Uh, most of the inclination stuff done in high orbit. And then we arrive at the station. So there it is. With somewhat triumphant music in the background. This is just the uh, music I was playing during the live stream. That's why it's sort of choppy because it happens to be whatever was playing at that time when I was live streaming. Uh, so not always the smoothest segues. But here we are docking. And so this station will be good for, it's actually only about a year with that supply vessel. So we're going to have to bring something more to it. That's not gonna be sufficient. So you can see there a year, maybe a year and a half with the water and oxygen, but only a year with the food. But anyway, that gives us a little bit of time. And so I turned to Dylord Brute and Mr. Doobie in Saturn SOI. We brought them into orbit around Saturn last time. And we need to do a maneuver so that they can get to the Saturn supply vessel that we have. I think it's a Saturn station or something like that. So it is an ion engine rendezvous, which is a little bit tedious and takes some planning. I don't do a whole lot of these ion engine rendezvous, but we have to do it because that's mainly the Delta V that they have available to them. And the supply vessel, which is what we're focused on right now with all that food, water, and oxygen is coming in to dock. They needed this desperately because otherwise... Oh, I think they were the Saturn station and this is a supply vessel. Uh, it's just a matter of the naming of things. But yes, here it is coming to dock to make sure they remain supplied because they were only carrying enough to get here. Uh, the supply vessel had to rendezvous with them so that they continue to be good on supplies. And indeed they are. Well, the thing at the top there, Mars Return 3, will be another thing that we need to turn to next. But yes, they are fine here. And so here is, in fact, Mars Return Vessel 3, the infamous mission with Pekka, Mark Gartner, and NST. We just left them in orbit. We had captured them into orbit around Earth, but we had just left them in orbit because they had supplies. I didn't bother to bring them back down just yet, but now we have to bring them back down because they are running out of supplies. So I launched uh, Classic, the Lynx on the Sujita Heavy. Uh, this was a rocket that I designed and used in other videos. Uh, don't worry about the launch structure, I didn't put colliders on it. 
I have since updated the textures on this rocket and spacecraft, but this is the old version. You'll notice that we are going into a very interesting inclination. We're headed south and all, and correcting a severe relative inclination with the Mars return vessel. And that's because the Mars return vessel came back from Mars. It didn't really get into a nice orbit around Earth. It's in a highly inclined orbit, and so we have to make sure to get to it. And that's why we launched the Sajita Heavy instead of just a normal Sajita, which could launch the Lynx capsule as well. We need the extra Delta V to make the rendezvous. And so here we go, that's the end of the core, and I let go of the launch escape system as well. And the second stage with the still the ED4V, the old methane oxygen vacuum engine that is on this stage. And that is a capture uh, over Haiti, it looks like, I think. I hope nobody minds if we go on that trajectory. Uh, maybe Cuba might have had issues, but anyway. So here we are uh, working on the rendezvous. We have to use up the stage that we have, and then we make use of the service module, which is fully fueled in this case. So it's a long burn time. It took a while. You can see 20 minute burn time for the service module and many, many, many burns here in order to make the rendezvous, but we get there. And once Lynx gets there, it has to wait for us to get rid of that utility pod. I'll call it the orange utility pod there that we had. Uh, it had been through quite a few things, but you'll have to watch previous videos to see all that business. But yes, we have to move that off in order to get the Lynx on now. Uh, we had left that on because it had the ability to provide RCS control for the huge ship. The huge ship didn't have uh, enough RCS on its own, really. Okay, and... Dock? Alright, so of course we will transfer the crew over, but we also wanted to deorbit this spent pod. It has a lot of Delta V, but we're not going to use it around Earth. So I just wanted to show it because it had sort of pretty plumes. Anyway, so the crew is now on board the Lynx and we deorbit it, leaving the Mars Return 3 vessel in high orbit. We could potentially reuse it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with fueling it back up again. It'd be horrible to launch. It's a very heavy cabin, actually, the habitat. So we could just take advantage of it being already up there. Okay, off with the service module, and on with re-entry with these guys. They are all three guys in this case. That, as well as courage and stupidity and the job, are left to the paying tourists that are involved. As it turns out, our return is very proximal to Cape Canaveral, and I think that was just by happenstance. I forget whether I did that intentionally or not. I doubt it. I normally don't. Uh, but there it is, Cape Canaveral, Katniss Cape Canaveral in this case, and we released the uh, Aerocap. At lower altitude we won't be able to see anything on the horizon as far as Cape Canaveral is concerned, so we get a little view here, but yes, on parachutes it's very indistinct at this point as we splash down safely. So they, have, they are the first three Kerbals that we have brought back from Mars, actually. <laughs> there are a lot of Kerbals around Mars, but we just sort of left them there, and they're the first returnees. Anyway, so Mir only had one year of supplies. I wanted to get more onto it, and so we deorbit yet another one of the supply containers to make room, and then we proceed with another launch. Now, I decided that we could probably launch a little bit more with the Saturn V that we had than we launched last time, so I decided to provide a sized up container with procedural parts and tried to paint the procedural part to match the existing HTV part that we had but the shade wasn't quite right. But anyway, I tried, and we are launching on the Saturn V again, because I wanted to get done quickly with it. And so here we go, and launch. Yep, that is nothing like a simple Saturn V sometimes. It is still on the old computer, so the Saturn V also had the benefit that it wasn't that laggy compared to the Energia rocket or something like that, or uh, God forbid a Falcon 9 with its 9 engines at the start. So it's mostly uh, the smokescreen stuff that causes lag, I think. But new computer, not so much of a problem on that. Okay, fairing. I'm always a little bit concerned with these procedural fairings that they're going to hit the body, but in that case it was alright, especially with the Saturn V because the second stage is wider. 
that, everything's alright. We switch to the third stage and we conduct TLI, I had a translunar injection going to the moon. And so, don't want to belabor this, we have seen it all before. Off it goes, the happy little supply vessel. And here it is en route to the moon, uh, en route to its mid-course adjustment there. We've got a little adjustment plotted that will hopefully make the correction to meet up with Mir in the polar orbit a little bit less severe. It says the relative inclination of about 45 degrees there, so that's not too bad. It could be worse anyway. So here it is capturing around the moon, uh, loosely probably, so that we can correct the rest of the... Ah, there we go. Yes, we are correcting the inclination in high orbit there. And here we are approaching Mir again. Now eventually we will bring some of the Kerbonauts back, and that's mainly because one of the Kerbonauts, Barafel, one of the paying customers, uh, said he wanted to be alone, and most of the Kerbonauts on Mir right now are uh, stock Kerbals, non-paying customers, and the ones who had paid for a trip to Mir hadn't said anything about wanting to stay there, at least they hadn't... Uh, popped into the stream in a while, so I decided to bring them back, so we didn't have to continue resupplying them. Next up we have a small correction on entry into Saturn's sphere of influence with the Saturn Amphibious Assault Ship. This is the somewhat unfortunately named uh, lander carrier. We have four small landers and then one big lander for Titan, uh, hopefully to land on the moons of Saturn. Uh, it'll be Thalarut and Mr. Doobie handling the smaller moons, and then Arthur e. King and Katak handling Titan. They uh, paid for the Titan package, if you will. And so that got a better approach around Saturn. This is completely different. This is around Jupiter. Uh, this is Envy Silence's mission to Europa. And this was the wet workshop. Uh, this is a SLS converted into a partial habitat with uh, still a hydrogen tank that was feeding a nuclear engine. I don't know why we had the, the xenon gas indicators open there. I think that was a glitch. I couldn't figure out how to close them. Anyway, this is capturing around Jupiter so that MV Silence can get to Europa, which will be a struggle because this really doesn't have sufficient delta V on its own. Fortunately, we have other ships to support it, so it'll eventually make use of those. But initially, we, we are going to try and fly by Europa repeatedly in order to bring our orbit down, but that becomes very tedious. So yeah, well, but this is the first flyby around Europa that I'm planning on, and we have to get on to the right side to make sure it helps us out to get closer to its orbit instead of further away. And here is the Saturn Amphibious Assault Ship approaching its periapsis around Saturn that we had uh, fixed up previously, and it is going to capture around Saturn using an Attila thruster, which is better than an ion engine. It's uh, a little bit easier to manage to burn with it. The ion engines, whenever we capture around a planet, it ends up nearly getting out back into interplanetary space before they finish the burn. It's very harrowing and inefficient, but this is alright, and I decided to drop the UI in order to see its capture around Saturn. Had to pass through the rings though, that's a little bit dodgy. But this has to get over to where Thylo Root and Mr. Doobie are in orbit around Saturn so that they can board the landers and make use of them. So that is the rendezvous that we are aiming for here. And we have to do a little bit of correction. We'll eventually have to move the node over to where the rendezvous is happening. And so I make a little correction, mid-course correction there so that we can move the node over there and make a proper rendezvous. But that's going to be interesting because the orbits are obviously very different, so it's going to take some effort to get these things to rendezvous with each other. And then we'll see how the landings go in subsequent videos. So with that tantalizing prospect ahead of us, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.